Mike and Mike presented by Progressive Insurance. You know, I'm going to ask you a question, and, and I recognize that it's going to sound like I'm asking it to Kyrie. So I, I get that you're not him and that you can't speak for him. But well, maybe, we'd like you to play Kyrie I'd right like you now. to play the role of Kyrie Irving in this. <laughs> if, if you're interested in becoming 1A and your belief is that LeBron is going to leave Cleveland after a year, why would, why would you not – stick it out one more season, take a shot at winning one more championship, then have LeBron leave and have it become your team when he departs. That, that's the one part of this that I find curious. It, it feels like he wants to get out of there as much as he wants to get away from LeBron. And, and that's, why, that's why I brought up how he was feeling about the Cavaliers prior to LeBron James coming aboard. Right. Remember, he, he, he wanted out. You know, Brian Windhorst back then. Was report was reporting that. Then you I did, and then just take a little way of LeBron. You add, like I said, you add how he found out about his name being included in trade talks. You know, in many ways, um, in, the, in the same ways that LeBron James uh, was disappointed and hurt. That's that's how Kyrie Irving feels about it. That's how he feels about how the organization did him, kept him out of loop. He feel like, hey man, I sacrificed my game. I gave in. Uh, to, to what I can accomplish as a player to try to make this work. And then behind my back, you guys are including me in trade talks. And so, and then he probably feels like LeBron was part of that. LeBron knew about it and didn't let him know. So that's why it, it's a divorce that he wants, that he craves from LeBron, and not only LeBron, but the Cavaliers as a whole. At Chris B. Haynes on Twitter. Very worth the follow and really good stuff this morning. Chris, thanks a million. We'll check in again soon. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Mike. Mike. Take care. That's Chris Haynes with us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. So it sounds there. That, that, that was what I was looking for is it's one thing. He, he's, he's, I wonder if they'd gotten Chauncey Billups and there felt like there was some stability at the top of the organization with a basketball guy who kind of knew what he was doing, that if, if that would have changed the way he feels about it. But with everything being as kind of in flux right. as it feels, and LeBron probably leaving, and looking at maybe looking at it and saying, we're probably not beating Golden State this year anyway. I'm not, I'm not costing myself a ring, and I'm never going to get out of here if I don't do it now because if LeBron leaves next year, they'll never trade me. I guess he just feels like he's got to get out right now. And, and, and who knows if LeBron's leaving. Everybody's speculating he's leaving, but as we found out, nobody freaking talks to one another. So it's like nobody finds out. It's, a, it's like Kyrie and LeBron don't talk. Not that you're obligated to talk, but, man, you think you might have a little bit of a conversation to see what's going on instead of one camp, you know, on another camp. And, and with Kyrie, he seems to be going the opposite of the – Kind of the way it's going now in the NBA as, as people team up to win a championship. Kyrie has his championship. Now he wants to go be the man. You know, I've said this about, you know, in football, guys that win Super Bowls. Back when, when I was finishing my career, when Dallas won two in a row in 92-93, you had guys that now won championships, and it was a different case then. Now we're going somewhere for the money. Right. They're like, okay, I got my championship. A bad team is going to sign me for a ton of money. Dallas isn't going to pay me that money. I got my championships. I'll go to this bad team. We'll be a bad team, but I'm going to make a lot of money. For Kyrie, it's different in the NBA because of where the money is. Kyrie's like, I got my championship. Now I want to go be the man somewhere, which is different than the, the game now, which is, hey, let's all get together to be the men somewhere and try and win a championship. He's kind of going the reverse. So really, it's it's an endlessly fascinating situation, and, and it also is brought up, as I've been following it on social media, an interesting divide between people who think Kyrie, just how good people think Kyrie is. Kyrie, to me, might be the most entertaining to watch offensive player in the whole league right now. And if you look at the best pure scorers in the league right now, I think you have to still give Kevin Durant his due and say he's number one. Mm -hmm. Based on his size, he's the best pure scorer. Yes. And he can score more different ways than anybody else in the league. Is Kyrie Irving next? Is he, is he, if he's not, is he close? I mean, Russell Westbrook. Yeah, Westbrook and Square. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Westbrook, Harden. I mean, the, it's the, all the usual the suspects. Two Kyrie is right there. The two entertaining guys in, from that respect are Russell and Kyrie. In right. The way they, James Harden, if you want to throw him in there. Russell as well. has this it has this insane like drive. He does. Um, well, Kyrie's, Kyrie's just handle got a beauty is beauty to ridiculous. Him. His handle's ridiculous, and his left hand is as good as but, any but we left all, hand we all, in the sport. We all talk about offense. Defensively, is no prize though. Correct. No, I mean, he's not. You sit there and you look at the real plus-minus ranks for point guards. This is point guards ranking. Mm -hmm. 
Offensively, we're comparing uh, Kyrie and Derrick Rose. Offensively, Kyrie was eighth amongst point guards. Rose, 32nd. Defensively, almost the same. Kyrie, 71st. Rose, 73rd. Overall, Kyrie, 12. And Rose, 51. Again, these are, you know, numbers. You, you do with them what you want. But we know he's, you know, not a prize on a huge prize on the defensive side. But you're looking for offense. That's what you hear any coach out there saying. We want, we want to get offense, offense, offense. That's what we're going to need to compete in this league. Look, Derrick Rose, I'm sorry to say this. He just isn't Derrick Rose anymore. I mean, that's oh, no. the Derrick Rose that we remember is not who he is now. It's a net, net loss for Cleveland, right? I mean, let's be honest. It's, an anno- I mean, if, it's a huge loss. Well, I mean, Kyrie for Derrick Rose is a trade no one would make at this point. So that isn't the deal. The deal is you sign Derrick Rose at a very, very reasonable rate, $2.1 million by NBA standards. That's basically nothing. And then what do you get for Kyrie? That's the question. So I'll ask you. If you put Isaiah, I'm just making these. Can, can you put the trade machine up in front of me here and, and, and type <laughs> the, the stuff in that, that Chris just went through? Isaiah Thomas, J, did he say Jay Crowder? Or Jay Jaylen Crowder Brown? and Jalen Brown. Both. J, both. Both of them. Both. Jalen Brown and Jay Crowder. For Kyrie, and, and he was going to throw a number one in there also. So you're going to put Boston, one of those picks that they have that everybody wants, for Kyrie. And then you start saying to yourself, does Boston do that? Here's the trade that's successful. Crowder, Isaiah, and Jalen Brown for Kyrie. Yeah, it is successful. Mm-hmm. That's without the pick in it. If you put the pick in it, what happens? It's without the pick. It's, the trade is successful. You can't do it. So we'll try and figure that out. You know, if you're, if you're, the, if you're the Celtics, do you do that? Do you trade well, Jay Crowder, Isaiah Thomas, and Jalen Brown for Kyrie Irving? Well, listen, let, let's be honest. Kyrie is an upgrade from Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas had an excellent year. And a monster fourth quarters, but we have to remember Kyrie is twenty five years old. How old is Isaiah Thomas? We'll, Go on, we'll see what that is. You, but. but I mean, Kyrie. I, I would if you could name a point guard and say you can have either Kyrie or Isaiah Thomas. There's no doubt you're taking Kyrie. Correct. Correct. I would. I would. Yes. But but I'll tell you what the the he's twenty eight. Yes. Is that, Thomas is Isaiah is twenty eight. So Kyrie's twenty five. Yeah. So I mean. That that's your point guard in a, in a building team in Boston. I think you would love that. And quite honestly, Isaiah Thomas wouldn't be counted on to you'd love him to score the way he did, but you wouldn't have to lean on that and hope somebody else comes along for the scoring ride occasionally, you know. And because you have LeBron and you have Kevin Love to do some of that, so I could see that working. While I don't think he's in the upper echelon, the, the superstar point guard, you know, he's 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 in that area is Isaiah Thomas. So of guys you're talking about getting back, unless they really want to go after one of the young guys, you know, uh, but I, I'd rather have a, 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 a veteran guy who's, who's a really good point guard with the ball, even though LeBron's going to have the ball a lot. That's the other thing. LeBron's going to have the ball a ton as well. So, I mean, Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas may not be bringing the ball up, you know, as, as much as he was in Boston. Let me give you a, a big wooden three. Thing. Is the big three of Kyrie Irving, Gordon Hayward, and Al Horford – is that a big three that's capable of, of what? I mean, what what are they are they any further along than they are right now? Well, I mean, the, the, you're talking about competing. do they beat LeBron? Ta- Isaiah. Well, well that's Thomas the question. And, Isaiah Thomas, Kevin Love, and, and LeBron. LeBron against Horford, Kyrie, and Hayward. And all of a sudden, Cleveland's deeper, right? Because they've got Jalen Brown depth, and Jay Crowder, and they have they have LeBron James, and so, they have the pick. So I'm still going with Cleveland Me too. So uh, Cleveland is, it remains but, the better team. But, but again. You can't build everything for next year. Kyrie's 25. Gordon Hayward is, is, is not an old player by any stretch no, either, right? No. So, I mean, you're building there. You have all those assets you can either use as picks or you can trade for others. So this isn't a we're doing everything this off offseason for next offseason, and, and then, we, then we have to start over. Boston is building. So what the time frame is, I'm sure fans and players there would love it to be short, uh, but we'll see. Hayward is 27. Can I just mention very briefly that tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN, we will be airing the Sports Humanitarian Awards. Uh, we actually did this in L.A. two weeks ago, and it is, it, we do it the night before the ESPYs, and what it is, the ESPYs, and all of this goes to support the V Foundation, the Humanitarian Awards in particular gave the Stuart Scott and Spire Award winners and raised more than $2 million for the Stuart Scott Memorial Cancer Research Fund. But the ESPYs celebrate the best athletic performances of the year, right? And, and, and then and we celebrate those. The Humanitarian Awards genuinely or, or specifically celebrate the people in sports 
who did the most special right, stuff philanthropically. Right, right. So it's just people in sports, not the best players or no, anything no, like nothing that. Nothing on the field, the court, or anything like that. And it was, I got to tell you, I, I, I hosted it with Layla Ali, and I have nothing to do with why this is such a special night. It was spectacular, sensational. You will get to see some work that is being done, some, some actions that are being taken by people in the sports world, all of whom you know, people with, with big names that you know in the sports world, from the NFL and the NHL and the WWE and the United States Tennis Association and more, who, um, who are making significant differences in a variety of different areas. And I was so thrilled to see ESPN celebrating those people. And so if you have time tonight, I'd love you to watch it. It's on 7 Eastern tonight on ESPN, the Sports Humanitarian Awards. And again, it has nothing to do with me. I'm barely on it. This is about the people who are being honored for all the work that they've done in a variety of areas. And, and one of them is childhood literacy. Right. And one of them is pediatric cancer and, um, and a variety of other areas. Um, it's really, really great stuff. And you will feel proud uh, to be a sports fan, which is something you don't get to feel all the time. Oh. Well, that's very true, you know, especially some petty things you see on the field or things like that. This is this is real life. This is this is sports people helping outside their arena and helping in, in the real world. I, I was taken aback by what a really nice evening it was. So it's tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPN. All right, a million other things. I've been dying to bounce off Golik, and I will get the chance to do that next after this word from Simply Safe. Vacation and he just can't get away is our own Brian Winhorst, who joins us this morning. I saw you the other day basically asking the NBA offseason to stand down because it's got to be interfering with whatever plans, <laughs> golf and otherwise, you had for the, 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 the latter part of July, which is not supposed to be this kind of insane. Okay, so Kyrie Irving has thrown the NBA into a tumult. There's a bunch of NBA executives who are, like, ready to go on vacation. Uh, they, you know, they, their families are out at the beach, and they're now on the phone uh, making trade offers uh, to the Cavs. Uh, one thing I want to point out, because uh, I'm seeing a lot of pushback all across the spectrum, which is what we see in these situations. Kyrie Irving is like any average American, uh, you know, businessman who's number two in his organization and wants to be number one. All right. So what is a deal that's out there that could theoretically make sense? I know I'm going to take you to a place you hate going, which is speculating. But if we just look, for example, at the teams that that you have reported, he says he's interested in. One of them is the Knicks, and the Knicks have two f interesting pieces here. One of them is Carmelo, who's been associated with LeBron and Cleveland forever. The other is the young Porzingis, who some think is the next NBA superstar, and Phil Jackson was looking to trade. So is there, is there a, a match to be made in either of those two pieces? Well, based on my conversations with people in the Cavs organization, I do not think they are looking for a player that is at the back end of his prime or maybe past his prime. I think the Cavs want a player who is young but is also, um, you know, not a, you know, you know, uh, not a rookie. And the player that fits that bill more than anything, in my mind, is Andrew Wiggins. This is a guy who, in my, who, in my estimation, would be an all-star in the Eastern Conference next year. Plays the wing position, which is what they need. Very especially what they need against the Warriors, plays both ends of the court um, and is young. And you can not only count on him to be a 20-point-a-game scorer and defend, uh, but also uh, be around with you for the next decade and you control his contract. For more Mike and Mike, check out the podcast on the ESPN app. Two one to Stanton is hit high and deep to right. Back goes Chu at the wall. Goodbye, Giancarlo with another multiple home run game, and for the Marlins a four nothing lead in the eighth. What a home run tear he's been on. Stanton now eleven homers in his last fifteen games. Mike and Mike, our check of Sports Center headlines. The play by play nine forty W I N Z. Giancarlo Stanton, as you heard, two homers. 4-0 Marlins win over the Rangers. He's now tied with Aaron Judge for the most homers in the bigs with 32. Derrick Rose is a Cav. It's a one-year deal for the 28-year-old former MVP who averaged 18 points a game for the Knicks last season. Does it pave the way or make it easier or fill the gap left behind by a uh, potential trade for Kyrie Irving? That's, of course, the big question. And the Broncos and John Elway have agreed to a new five-year contract. Sources telling our Adam Schefter the deal will make him the league's highest paid general manager. Sports Center with Mike and Mike brought to you by Ballpark Bun. They are celebrating National Hot Dog Month, as everyone should, with the fame on sweepstakes. The winner is going to get a VIP experience at the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, plus three grand for travel. To enter the fame on sweepstakes, go to 
ballparkbuns.com slash fame on. I have a question for you. Yes. You've done the show now a couple of times with my son, Mike. Yes. Okay. And he does all the reads as well. He does the reads. He so, swipes the Midas. Right, right. But as far as the reads. Yeah. Be honest. You can yeah. be honest. Do I read gooder than him? You know, I'm not going to say you read gooder. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm, he certainly doesn't read badder. Let's put it that way. His reading is not badder than your reading. So you're saying his reading is gooder than mine? I didn't say that. You said that. I merely said his reading isn't badder. But if than it's that. not badder, then doesn't it mean it's gooder? No, they can be equally good. Are they equal? The goodliness, the goodness of them can be equivalent. Are we equal or is he better? You know, you each have strengths. Yeah. Um, oh, God. You know, he and I got into a, a lengthy conversation, and, and I could not help but take note at the delightful um, wedding of your son, Jake, and his beautiful now wife, Jenny, mm-hmm. Of because I sat directly in front of your brothers. Right. At just the enormous amount, and, and I only say this aloud now because your son has made it clear we actually talked about how mm-hmm. comfortable he is with this topic of conversation. Oh, the, the, how uncomfortable is There's it? so much hair in your family. I mean, it's unbelievable. Your brothers are, it's like sitting next to like, I don't know, like they, should, they look like you should be on the cover of an album from the 70s. There's yeah. so yeah. much hair between your brother Bob and your brother Greg. It's like, it's like they're like ELO. I mean, that's a reference <laughs> that no one knows <laughs> what I'm talking <laughs> about but you. <laughs> But they have an enormous yeah. amount of hair. Yeah. They look like they should be in a touring company yeah. of Jesus Christ Superstar, yeah. you know, like the old Broadway oh, yeah. show. They have all this big hair. They've got the huge hair. You've got a, a ridiculous amount yeah. of hair. Yeah. That's the part. So I think it is possible that you got the hair gene. I did. And he got the reading gene. Is this a nice way of you now saying he's he's better than me? He's better at reading than you. Yeah, I would say that. So we, we've boiled it all down to that. To that, kind of. But you've got hair. So would you prefer... To have the better hair or to be the better reader. Oh, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's mind to have better hair. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, I mean, right. I think you sure. got the better end of that deal. Does he speak better than me as well? Well, I mean, look, listen, let's, let's, not, let's not get uh, personal here. Let's not get ourselves, let's not get ourselves right, upset. We're having on. so much fun. Okay, then let me read you this tweet here that I think you'll like from Jeff. Seriously, isn't there a hotel a mile away from the studio? Why did you sleep on the floor? That's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, there are there is yeah. a hotel a mile away from the studio. There are now like four hotels a mile away. When we first started here, when I did, I used to stay there all the time, and you as well. There was the one hotel that was a Radisson, right? That was right was down a Clarion. This, a Clarion, Clarion, a Clarion, yeah. And then it became something else, and, and now it's a Double Tree. Tree. And there's also a, but there's a there's a. Um, there, there's a, 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 a there are like four hotels. Yeah, there, there are within 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 a five within minute drive distance. of where you we're know, sitting. That's a good question. I think I just wanted to to my wife's point when she was texting me last night. Just get there, get to the studio, and 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 basically save every minute you can of being able to lay down. But the offset of going five minutes out of my way, checking in, going through that process, and maybe taking twenty minutes more or so and getting a bed to sleep in, it's a good thought. <laughs> You know, what, I wish I, what I wish I had about five hours ago. <laughs> it's a really good thought. Might have been yeah. worth it for the 20 minutes that you lost. I will say this, however. Again, Golik is working on basically no sleep, and he spent the night on the floor of his office, the few hours that he got to sleep, and is still wearing the same clothes, which suggests you didn't take a shower. Your no, hair is a, is a marvel. Yeah. Your hair looks perfect. It looks fat. If I did that... I'd look like a like, like I don't even I look like a Martian. I don't I, even know what I'd look like. I need like a, I need that that Madame Trudeau. I need a, a wax thing of myself and just what they would do with my hair. How good it would. I be. I think it's Tussaud, right? Is Isn't it? it is, did it, I say it, Trousseau? Is it Trudeau? I, Trousseau? I, I think I think that's the wax. I always get that one wrong, and then your other Hercules Herc- guy. Yeah, <laughs> the detective Hercule Poirot. I think there's a move. There's a movie coming out with him. There have been many. Well, I mean, a new another one. Is there, are they making it? Yes, one? Okay, yes, good. there go, is. Go see that. It's, I love it's them. It's like it's like the movie, or it's like the game Clue is what it is on a train. It it's actually looks pretty good. But then he said, "I'm I'm Hercules," and I said, "Oh, that that's Kill Poirot." It's whatever. The, well, the, I think it's it's Murder on the Orient Express. There you go, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So they're remaking Murder yes, on the Orient they Express. Are. Oh, oh there was already a movie about that. Yeah, they made that movie many many years ago. Was it a book when we were kids? Yes. Was it, it a was book a, I didn't read? Agatha Christie book. She created this detective named Hercule Poirot. I think I remember the Spark Notes. That. <laughs> Golik in school was reading Agatha Christie novels. All right, let's do fill in the blank. It's brought to you by Mahindra Tractors and Utility Vehicles. Mahindra USA, the world's number one selling tractor. Here we go. Golik. One word to describe the Cavaliers organization right now is disheveled. 
Uh, along those lines, I mean, they, they, now they do have a GM who was a GM who was an assistant GM, is now the, the full-time GM. They didn't get Chauncey Billups, who was never a GM, but everybody knows who Chauncey Billups is as opposed to who's the GM now. The, the, the biggest thing out there seems to be everybody believes LeBron is leaving next year. Is he really going to leave next year? And now the drama of the Kyrie and LeBron. I mean, some things you just, I guess, never expected. I, just like we assumed Russell Westbrook and... Kevin Durant playing eight, nine years together would have discussed things and talked, and then we find out they didn't. You know, so I, I, I don't know what gives anymore, you know, in these organizations. I said the drama. Basketball is the, it's a great offseason. Basketball players are the best Twitter follows, but, man, there is drama. You know, I'm trying to come up with one word because I, I want to put into context that they remain the best team in the Eastern Conference. If they make even a reasonable trade for Kyrie Irving, so what's the one word, like, um, I guess, challenged or something like that, but not not done. No, no. I mean, not not dead. No, here. no, absolutely not. They're still the best team in the East. They, they are still the best team in the East. And if they were to make the trade, for example, that Chris Haynes was talking about with Boston, that got them Isaiah Thomas and a bunch of depth and a number one pick. Oh, my God. They could actually be in a pretty decent place. Yeah. So maybe one word to describe the Cavaliers organization right now is um, I, I'm not sure what the one word that Struggle. says all those things Struggle are. Struggle for you. Yeah, they made it harder for me with one word. I'll, I'll say hopeful. I want to say hopeful because I, I don't think that they're in as much. They're not dead. They, they can make this thing work. Like you said, want. no matter what's going on, they're still the best team in the East. Right? I believe they are. All right, Kyrie Irving will tip off the upcoming NBA season wearing a blank jersey. Minnesota. I go with the Wiggins trade. I mean, that's the one that we talked about yesterday with. Um, I think I think Cleveland would like, would like to have Wiggins back. <laughs> I, what what could they? I mean, at this point, this is all you're looking for. If Cleveland's like, okay, we got to trade this guy, then obviously they need a trade that's gonna as w- probably won't be equal in talent value. Just obviously, we know the money has to equal up, but then then what are you getting back? You would love to get back if even. Here's the thing. Even if LeBron isn't leaving next year, LeBron only has a couple of more years, yeah, right? Yeah. So even from that point, you have to start looking toward the future with younger players. But if you're Tom Thibodeau, would you rather have Kyrie Irving than Andrew Wiggins? Like, I'm not sure Minnesota does that. Well, It's Thibodeau, all well and good to say Cleveland wants to Thibodeau do that. Thibodeau with the defensive side of the ball is I not mean. really going to allow, you know. I don't know that he does that. I, I, we're going to talk to Stu Gotts coming up off the top of the next hour. I, I'm going to just throw this out there. I'm going to say a heat jersey. Oh, t- you're buying it in the Miami heat. thing, too. I am. I'm going to say well, heat. we know one thing. He can go there and be the man. <laughs> he can be the man. He got no state tax, but that has nothing to do yeah, with it, obviously, yeah. trade. Okay, next. The Dodgers signing Clayton Kershaw to a long-term extension after this latest trip to the DL would be? Shaky? Again, he has uh, next year, and then it's a player option for two years where he's supposed to make 32 mil, then 33 mil. So when he can start the player option, he'd still have 65 mil on the table. Do you opt out? Maybe not get as much per year, but get a longer deal and make well more than that, you know, um, as far as overall. But boy, oh boy, you got to keep an eye on what's going on. Third time with the back. The back is so detrimental. That That's a tough call, but he, what, he's, he's going to be 30 next March. He's so good, though. I'm going to say risky. I think risky. All right, let me give you one more here, and then I'm going to save the SEC topic for a little bit later. Colts fans should be blank that Andrew Luck is starting the season on the PUP list. I'll <clears throat> quote a famous quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. But to put it in this context, I'll add E-D. R-E-L-A-X, E-D. Be relaxed. Relax. Okay. No problem. I'm not worried about it. Just, just going to start throwing. Just had right. Just started throwing. No issue with that. Don't worry about it. Worry more about the talent around him than Andrew Luck. I guess I'm just being hopeful there. And that's fill in the blank. It's brought to you by Mahindra Tractors and Utility Vehicles. Mahindra USA, the world's number one selling tractor. Coming up next, one quarterback is defying his team's instructions. Is he doing the right thing? Golik has the answer after this word from Shell. You know what? There are a few different ways you can get rewarded, right? You can get that promotion at work. You can hit the winning jumper in your pickup basketball game. You can play the sick card when your in-laws invite you over. All of those are rewarding. Got an easier way to get rewarded. That's by filling up at Shell. Because now when you join the Fuel Rewards program, you get rewarded with instant gold status, which means you save on every fill every day. It's their way of saying thanks for choosing to fill up at Shell. You deserve to be rewarded. So join the Fuel Rewards program now at your participating Shell or at fuelrewards.com slash 
ESPN. We're back after this on Mike and Mike. Hell would the Wolves trade Wiggins for Irving when they already have Teague? It just doesn't make sense. No. I think there are any number of yeah, reasons yeah. why they wouldn't would, trade wouldn't Wiggins. Wouldn't do it, yeah, yeah. I, at this point, the way the game is played, especially if you're if you're Minnesota, they seem to be set in a pretty good direction in, in, in building forward, maybe not wanting to give up pieces, even though Kyrie is a, is a heck of a piece to get. But uh, I, I'm really interested, and we thought we would be, of what Minnesota would, would be turning into. I think they're really good. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, if, if Towns is one of the two or three best bigs in the sport, if Towns is in that category right now, as I think he is, and I think you think he is, with Anthony Davis, and if he should ever stay healthy, Joel Embiid, if he's that kind of good, and you've got Wiggins on yeah. the perimeter, and you've got Jimmy Butler, and you have a, a more than able point guard in Teague, you know, now all of a sudden you've got you're gonna are you gonna break that up yeah. and, and take the the wing the perimeter defender in Wiggins out of the mix for a guy in Kyrie who wants the ball in his hands, wants to take it to the basket, wants to play ISO, and doesn't want to play defense. That doesn't feel like a Tom Thibodeau kind of. It doesn't, thing. but you still I know I know and Thibodeau loves defense, but you got to have some offense too. And Kyrie will give you a ton of offense. Look, I mean Kyrie is is there a similarity to the way Derrick Rose played when Rose was the MVP? Well, Thibodeau was his coach. Right. So maybe if you're Kyrie, you want to go there because you're looking at it, you're saying that's kind of the way. What he did with Rose. Thibodeau made D. Rose into the MVP of the league. So I I can see his interest in it. I'm not 100% sure that's what I think is going to wind up happening. Uh, Raymond tweets about the one word for the Cavaliers. His one word is sinking, as in the ship be sinking, (laughs) as in the legendary Michael Ray Richardson quote. We'll pause 10 seconds, Mike and Mike. Uh, we are Mike and Mike, and all this Twitter reaction, as always, through the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed. Nothing makes a summer birthday or anniversary more magical than 1-800-Flowers.com. And right now, when you order a dozen multicolored roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, you get another dozen absolutely free. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Jason tweets, are the Cavs becoming a more talented version of the Knicks at this point? Well, you mean as far as organization? I don't know if I would go that far. And more talented by meaning the best team in the East. <laughs> you know what? You deal with some of the bad things if you're going to represent the East in the finals, which at this point I still think they are. Let's just contemplate that sentence. Yeah, yeah. The Cavaliers have won more games in every postseason the last three years than the Knicks have won in the last 15 years. I don't mean in all of those postseasons. I mean in any of those postseasons. They've won more. They've been to the finals three straight years. The Knicks have not won a playoff series. Have, have they won one playoff series in 15 years. Yeah. So so I'm not, not really sure where you're going with that. It's like, boy, my organization stinks. Hey, did you get your NBA finals tickets? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. It is a ridiculous situation because you've got LeBron for one more year. So you tell me if you're the the Alf, if you're I'm making you Dan Gilbert. You're a Clevelander, right. so yeah. you, this yeah. matters to you at least on some level. How do you play this? Do you play this as though, assuming that you can't really do both, are you going all in to try and win a championship? with LeBron this year in hopes that that will encourage him to want to stay, that it's going to be awful hard I to walk away after a time. and I talk to LeBron. Right. But LeBron does – he's not obligated to tell no, you what no, he's, he's going to do No, no, he's not, but year. that's at least where I start. I can get some kind of feel. Now, maybe it's not Dan that does that. Maybe you have the, the new GM do that because Dan and LeBron, I don't think, have the greatest relationship right. in the world. Right, right. But you start there and say, you know, you know, you came back here to bring us a championship. You did that. We understand the future could be cloudy. Any direction, anything at all. You know, I mean, we're good either way. But, but if you don't have a true knowledge of whether he's going to stay. you have LeBron, I don't care if he says he's staying and it's going to be for two or three more years, you load up each year to win the championship until LeBron is gone. That's so, what I do. So if you're going to trade Kyrie, you would be willing to trade Kyrie for an older piece. I would trade him for a piece that's going to help me right 
now. Why wouldn't I? You have LeBron James. Why would you do anything that 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 would mean, hey, this guy could be great in a couple of years? For no. fear that you wind up with the with the cupboard totally bare right. a year from now. And there's already going to be fear of that. There's going to be fear when LeBron's done. It's no longer a destination point for anybody. Now, if you lose Kyrie on top of that, that fear is real. But if you give, if my point is, if you then get young players for Kyrie, right. you have something to build on, but you have less of a chance of winning now. I am absolutely, positively trying to get a champion. See, I am too. And and part of the thinking is it might be hard for LeBron to walk away off a title. Like if they win, if, if you win the championship this year. I agree. I am not. I am still the one. You know, people say it's because I'm from Cleveland, but I'm telling you it's not. That I, I just don't understand all the LeBron leaving talk. Now, Kyrie leaving certainly doesn't help the situation, no doubt about that. But as far as I'm concerned, they're still going to be the best team in the East. So I, I'm I'm just not buying into all that hype just yet. Yeah. I mean, I don't have any inside knowledge of it either, but I'm just hearing everyone right, right. who is inside on this stuff say LeBron's leaving after this year. So maybe the one way you keep him is if you win the championship. It's going to be – I think it would be tough to oh, win the too. championship, go through the parade, have the celebration, and then, then walk away. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be a tough thing to do. Okay. There have been a bunch of stories I've been dying to bounce off you. Let me read you this one. I bounced it off Mikey actually yesterday a little bit. So Marcus Mariota uh, mm-hmm. on a really good football team with the Titans. And if he had not gotten hurt at the end of last year, maybe they would have made the right, playoffs. Right, right, right. And this year, who knows? M- maybe they make a run. Love the what AFC. they're doing. Love. Talk about an arrow up team. It's Tennessee. And look, everybody loves Marcus Mariota. But the Titans and his personal trainers seem to have different ideas about what he should be doing. So the Titans coaches told Mariota, They want him to weigh between 225 and 230 Mm -hmm. in order to protect himself better from hits. And he has spent this offseason losing weight. According to Mariota's personal trainer, he is going to report at about 215 in hopes of being more mobile. Ryan Flaherty, the senior director of performance at Nike, said, I've always told Marcus I thought he should play a 215 because he was fastest at that weight. The number one quarterback uh, injury in the NFL is AC sprain, and that's from getting hit. I told him they can't hit what they can't catch, so he should think about playing at a weight where he is fastest. So you got the coaches saying, we want you to bulk up a little bit to absorb the punishment. You got his own performance people saying, let's lose weight that'll make it harder for them to hit you and faster. What do you think? No problem with him losing that weight. When we say losing weight, understand he's probably going to have more muscle. I mean, these guys, they don't just lose weight and become scrawny. That's not what we're talking about here. The way they do it in the days, you kind of redevelop your body. And it'll be a good, I'm sure it'll be a good looking 215. I have zero problem with it. Listen, I love coaches to death, but they're not the ones I'm going to really listen to about what weight I'm going to be at, especially in today's game and performance that's needed. We are seeing shifts in everything. We're seeing tackles become, you know, offensive tackles become smaller and, and, and better athletes. When I say smaller, <laughs> you know, 300, 310, 315, you know, there are still some bigger ones because they have to move better because of the, of the faster pass rushers. So I, I, I love this guy as an athlete, and if it's going to get him a little bit faster and he's smart, the key here is the Russell Wilson approach. Understand how to avoid hits. You're still going to get hit, right. but you can avoid a lot of hits as well. I have zero problem with him dropping this five to seven to eight pounds because he'll redistribute that weight, and I think he'll be just fine. I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. I have a handful of other NFL stories I want to get to here, including one on Odell Beckham Jr. that you will really want to hear. Those plus Stu Gotts on the way next. Mike and Mike was supposedly blindsided by this story. There also appears to be, I would think, that right under the surface, tension between Irving and LeBron, okay? And, and because, so says the report. Yes. Because if you ask for a trade, like, if you do something like this, is it not reminiscent of Kevin Durant not even talking to Russell Westbrook and just leaving on his own? Kyrie did not know that LeBron was coming back to Cleveland. So Kyrie was salty from that moment. According to my sources, LeBron James has tried to appease him at every turn. LeBron James' beef with Kyrie has nothing to do with Kyrie wanting to be traded. One of the things that I would consider writing is this. Dan Gilbert, trade LeBron. Get something, get anything. Trade LeBron. You're not going to win a championship this year, and then he's going to leave. Move him now, not necessarily Kyrie Irving. Or is it just that Kyrie Irving is a selfish player who can't stand being in the shadow of the best player in the NBA? Kyrie Irving 
doesn't want to be LeBron James' little brother. He doesn't want to be LeBron James' sidekick. I had sources in LeBron James' camp literally tell me, and I'm quoting, if Kyrie Irving was in front of LeBron James right now, LeBron James would be tempted, quote, to beat his LeBron is upset that Kyrie has made him a subject to be broached in regards to Kyrie's desires to move out. This is Mike and Mike on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. Derek Rose signs with the Cavaliers. Derrick Rose certainly found a situation where he's able to win and win big. Kyrie wants out. LeBron wants to beat him up. Kyrie has his championship. Now he wants to go be the man. But yeah, I got home about 2, 2.15. I slept in my office. A 54-year-old man sleeping on the floor using my the Rubbermaid trash can for a pillow. It's, it's just horrific. It's just something so it's wrong right about that. Wrong totally about that. Crazy. Now, here's Mike and Mike. That really is. We're Mike and Michael, presented by Progressive Insurance. Our guests on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line, sleeping on the floor of your office or with your head on a garbage can, is something Stu Gotts should do. Yeah. Right? I, that's not something you should do. I, I, you know, hey, work 20 years at a company, and that's that's what you can do, too. Sleep on the floor when you get in late, huh? Or early, I guess, would be the question. I guess it's my own fault. I should have had something better prepared in my office over all these years. You got a pillow. I don't have a pillow. I have a pillow in my office. I have a cot. I have a sleeping bag. You can tell me any of that. They've been there for 20 years. Where? In, in my I've been office. in your office. Your office is like spotless. <laughs> How you can you? I, 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 I never see it. More the easier to find. Where them. is it? It's not sitting They're out anywhere. Tucked in underneath the desk. Really? Yes, I used to take naps in there all the time when I used to do Sports Center. Well, that's information I could have had a few hours ago. There are couches all over the ESPN campus. I'm not just gonna go lay on a couch. You know, out. You know, no. God forbid you should do that. You're going to go lie on the floor of your office with your head on a garbage. Your can. office is right next to mine. Correct. You have a cot. Right. You have a sleeping bag. Right. You have a blanket. A pillow. The sleeping bag is its own blanket. Right. You. You touch Here's the thing. into it. If I were to now, if I had all of that, yeah, I would have slept like I normally do in the nude. Yeah. Would Would you then have thrown that stuff away or just given it to me? I think I would have. Yeah, I think I would have given it to you. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say, I think I would just had it washed. Uh, there's not enough washing. Let's put it this way. Yeah, there's not enough washing <laughs> in the world that would have made that sleeping bag worth it. So, so I'd have got myself a sleeping bag and yes. a pillow? I think I would have given you the sleeping bag and the pillow, and I'd have sold the cot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Stu Gotts will join us in a second. Two other things I came across here. All right. W- one of them, well, you know what? Let's bring Stu Gotts in, and then we'll do the other stuff afterwards. I don't want to waste any of the time that we could be having with Stu Gotts, who, if anyone, again, should be sleeping on the floor of an office with his head on a garbage can. There you it go. It is this man <laughs> from the Dan Lebetard Show with Stu Gotts. Stu himself joins us from Miami on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Good morning, Stu. Good morning, guys. I've slept in this very studio, in fact. I have slept in this studio on an air mattress. I lost yet another bet to Levitard. I forget what it was, but I have slept in the studio. I'm doing this interview from right now. Golik, I've been in your office before, man. You don't need a desk. Like, I was wondering when I was sitting in your office, I didn't say this to you out loud, but I was wondering, why does Mike Golik have a desk? You should just have a bed in there. That thing should just be a bedroom for you. That's it. You don't need a desk. Listen, I conduct business in there. Actually, I don't. And that's what I said to my wife. I said, maybe I should have cleaned everything out of there a while ago and made it a bedroom. Yes. Well, that's exactly what you should have done. I don't think anyone at ESPN needs a desk less than you, Mike Golick. So I, I like the need. First off, you have an office. I'm jealous of that. But secondly, to occupy that office with a desk that you don't need makes little to no sense. It should just be a bed. Get a nice I, bed in there. I'm just amazed. Greeny's got a cot, a sleeping bag and a pillow I knew nothing about. You just said right. you sleep in the office and have an air mattress. I'm on the stinking mm-hmm. floor with a, with a garbage can for a pillow. I had an air mattress at one time, and then I, I, I felt it was an upgrade to the cot with a sleeping bag. I felt it was more comfortable. Yes. Oh, and it's yes. a lot of work to, to inflate and then deflate a uh, That was the issue? Air mattress. To turn the compressor on is a lot of work? It, no, but it, it, yes, it actually is a little more work than you feel like. You, you should be criticizing me for not wanting to do the work. A man who could not be bothered to check into a hotel last night Good point. when there are four of them within a, a one-minute walk of where we're currently fair. sitting. All right, Stu, guys. Uh, no, Greeny, Greeny yeah. that is fair. Uh, Mike, you have to understand, for guys like me and Greeny, that is a lot of work. I'm not even certain Greeny does the air mattress by himself. I'm guessing he has someone, maybe Brooks or someone, blow that air mattress up for him and then deflate it after he's done. 
Yes, don't give those secrets away. That's, those people are hard to find. Okay, I just came across this from um, on Twitter from Slam Magazine. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver feels bad about, quote, whatever is going on in Cleveland and finds the Kyrie Irving trade request news upsetting. This is a tweet from Chris Fedor. Um, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver feels bad for Cleveland in the wake of Kyrie Irving's reported trade request. I'll try to read a little more into it. Here it is. Here, here's the full quote per Cleveland.com. I feel bad for whatever's going on in Cleveland. I assume where there's smoke, there's fire. He actually said this on the Rich Eisen show. It's upsetting to see when you, uh, it's upsetting to uh, when you see a superstar player two superstar players who have coexisted and have had so much success together, three finals in a row, to hear that for whatever reason there is a sense they can't continue to coexist. Yes, that's drama. It's not necessarily the kind of drama that the league wants. So there's the perspective of the commissioner if we were looking for that. Stugatz, Kyrie Irving wants out. What's your take? Uh, First off, with Commissioner Silver, I'm not certain I believe that. We're in the middle of July, far away from the basketball season, and everyone's talking about the NBA. So I I don't know what he's talking. It's not the kind of drama he wants. It's the kind of drama the league has created. It's why we're all fascinated uh, with the offseason. Guys, I heard Chris Haynes on the show earlier, and I thought he made some really fascinating points. I, I think this thing is really simple as we're all trying to figure it out. I think Kyrie Irving just doesn't like LeBron James, doesn't like being LeBron James' teammate. I think it's that simple because LeBron, there's a lot of pressure with playing uh, with LeBron. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of, you know, you're kind of up in the air. You're thinking about what his next move is going to be. And I think Kyrie has just grown tired of that element. And, you know, I kind of think back to what what Chris said on your show earlier about – you know, the promises the Cavs organization made to Kyrie Irving. He was going to be the guy. And then LeBron comes in. And, you know, Kyrie was excited. But, you know, LeBron could bring all his friends and all his business partners on the plane. And Kyrie can't do any of that stuff. And to me, it's just interesting. Like, imagine, think for a second, if you're Kyrie Irving and you've been to three straight championships and you feel like you're just as big a reason as why the Cavs have gone to three straight NBA finals and why they won it two years ago. He hit most many of the big shots, including the biggest shot in the NBA finals against the Warriors. And everything is always about LeBron James, pleasing uh, LeBron James, placating LeBron James. Uh, That can get tedious for a guy. I don't think it's about Kyrie wanting to be the guy. I think it's about Kyrie just wanting to get away from LeBron James. And the reason I say that is some of the teams on his list, San Antonio, he's not going to be the guy there. The Heat, not going to be the guy there. The Heat's culture doesn't let allow a guy to be the guy. Uh, and in Minnesota, in a couple of years, Carl Anthony Towns will be the guy. And so it just it got me thinking back to how the Heat handled LeBron James when he got down here. I'll tell you a quick story, guys. He wanted to stay in Memphis, or New Orleans one year after the Heat played. Chris Paul was still there. He wanted to stay, and he'd meet the team in the next destination and because that's what he was accustomed to. That's what he did in Cleveland. He did whatever he wanted. And Pat Riley said, no, get your butt on that plane. You're going with the team. This is your team. It's my team. And so it's interesting. It just got me thinking about that story where the Heat from day one said, LeBron, you are not above the team. You are part of this team. You're not sticking around for Chris Paul's party. You're going to get on the plane with your teammates and go to the next destination. So I think all this gets down to Kyrie Irving just tired of dealing with all the baggage that comes with playing with LeBron James. We, we did fill in the blank a little bit ago, and, and one of the questions was, what jersey will Kyrie be in next year? And Greeny said Miami. Do you think that is a possibility? And what would, what would Cleveland, what would work for Cleveland, do you think, in return? Um, I do think it's, listen, it's a possibility. First off, the Cavaliers don't have to trade him. Secondly, the Cavaliers can trade him wherever they want to trade him. And if I'm the Cavaliers, I'm trying to get the biggest haul, the best deal I can get uh, for Kyrie Irving. And if that comes from the Heat, then so be it. If it comes from the Celtics, I take that deal. I happen to agree with Chris Haynes. I think the Celtics are the, are the perfect team because they have the most assets in the NBA to get a guy like Kyrie Irving. But, yeah, if you're talking about the Heat, Mike, it's going to be, you know, a package like Goran Dragic and, and Justice Winslow and, and maybe another guy. And I'm not certain if that's enough for the Cavaliers. But, uh, listen, that's one of the teams Kyrie wants to play for. So if the Heat are, are willing to give that up, and they certainly should be willing to give that up, then, then maybe there's a chance that Kyrie comes here. I, I don't think this will be his destination. I think it will be elsewhere. I think the Cavaliers know they can get a lot more for Kyrie Irving than they can from the Heat. Mike and Mike and Stu Gotts were presented by Progressive Insurance. I'm fascinated by that story you told about LeBron in Miami, and we hear a lot of that, and we know that there was a feeling that LeBron kind of ran everything when he was in Cleveland the first time, and then yep. he went to Miami, and things were vastly different, and clearly he was adapting himself to being Dwayne Wade's teammate, and that had been Wade's team previously, and no one really knows exactly what's going on now. 
how would you describe the way the guys who were his friends, particularly Dwayne Wade, who remains his best friend or one of his best friends, felt about playing alongside LeBron James and all of the drama that seems to follow that? Well, I, listen, I think Wade enjoyed it. Wade recruited him down here. Wade wanted him down here. They are best friends, and Wade knew in order to win championships, more championships, he had the one before LeBron got, uh, got there. He needed LeBron James. Um, I just do think that everything that goes with LeBron James kind of wears thin on just about everyone, including Dwayne Wade. Think about that final season, guys. Dwayne Wade, and, and, now, and now think about it if you're Kyrie Irving. Dwayne Wade is LeBron James' best friend. And Dwayne Wade took an airplane with him back from Las Vegas, and LeBron James did not tell his best friend what his intentions were in that free agency year where he decided to go back to Cleveland. So if he's not going to tell Dwayne Wade, and if he's going to drag Pat Riley, a legend, across the country to Vegas for a bogus meeting, you think Kyrie Irving feels like he's going to get the truth from LeBron James in this final season? I just think Kyrie felt like, hey, I don't want to deal with this. I saw what he did to Miami. I saw what he did when he left here the first time. And I don't want to be his teammate in his final season in Cleveland when he's leaving. So I, I happen to applaud Kyrie Irving for finally taking a stand. Someone finally took a stand. Uh, to LeBron James. Uh, I, listen, the teammates down here in Miami loved it, Mike, because they went to four straight NBA finals and won two NBA titles. But I'm telling you, in that last year, it kind of worked in. And listen, many of the reports at the end with LeBron, some of this stuff got down to like really petty things about his friends, about his business partners, how many tickets they would get and, and would they be able to travel with the team. And look, that's just not going to fly down here. Pat Riley's not going to let that happen under his watch. Everyone's equal. Huh. You know, that, that is interesting because at what price to a championship? Because you get two of them down in Miami. You get a couple, right. so it all pays off to the ultimate goal. And then you, get a, you do get a championship in Cleveland and three straight finals appearances as well. But I guess everybody has a line, especially when you think you're not at that level like Kyrie. You're not at LeBron's level, but you're one of the superstars of the league. And you see another person, you know, get handed things or get the special perks in a, in a sport where, boy, the individualism, Stu, is just incredible compared to the other sports. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, listen, one guy in that sport means more than, than any other sport. I mean, you have a LeBron James, you're going to go to the NBA Finals just about every year. In fact, every team that's had LeBron James has gone to the NBA Finals for like the last decade. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it, listen, it's, it's, a team, it's an individual sport wrapped in a team sport because we all know this entire sport, this entire league is about the superstars, guys. And then one final one for you before we get to Beef Stew, and it'll set up the first Beef Stew topic perfectly. You are a, uh, a fan of the New York Knicks. That is a team yep. that miraculously wound up on Kyrie Irving's list of places he would like to go. Would you as a Knicks fan trade Chris Dapps Porzingis for Kyrie Irving? No, I would Mike, I wouldn't. Like for me, that makes sense to the Knicks if you can have Kyrie Irving and Porzingis together for the next bunch of years. Um, I'd give Carmelo and I'd give any anything else on that roster. I'd give the entire roster but Porzingis. I'd give Carmelo, I'd give draft picks, I would not part ways with Porzingis. Um, I know how talented Kyrie Irving is, but you got Kyrie under contract for two more years. And if they're not good in two years, my fear is Kyrie might leave New York, even though he's from that area and wants to play. Uh, for that team but to me it doesn't make sense like you're not I don't think you're any better than you were you, you get a lot better if you have Kyrie Irving and Kristaps Porzingis together I don't think you're that much better if you just swap Porzingis for Kyrie Irving completely agree on that one let's get to some beef here you have more beef with the Knicks hiring Scott Perry as a GM or that he hasn't met the owner James Dolan yet uh, I do find it funny that the Knicks, they, they looked far and wide for a guy to save the organization, and they landed on the guy who was running the Sacramento Kings. That part I do find, I do find pretty funny because they've had so much success uh, in the last, uh, I don't know, two decades or so. Um, not to say that Scott Perry's going to do a bad job, he might, and you can't do any worse than Phil Jackson did. My bigger beef is with James Dolan and the fact that he can't find five minutes to meet the guy that he hired. He owns something that is worth over $1 billion, and you would think he would want to meet the guy that he put in charge to run the thing that's worth over $1 billion. My problem with James Dolan is everyone cares more about this organization the fans, the players, the coaches, management, everyone cares more about the organization than the guy who owns the organization. And that's really bothersome to me. And it's partly our fault because we enable James Dolan because he knows he's got a line 50,000 miles long for people who are lining up, who want season tickets, who want floor seats to that game. They're going to pay the money. And he also knows he can sell that franchise whenever he wants 
for almost as much money as he wants, certainly in the billions, guys, probably more than the L.A. Clippers, so, uh, and what Bomber paid for them. So my overall beef is with James Dolan and just the, the Knicks seem to be a hobby to him. It means so much to the people in New York. It means so much to the fan base, and this guy treats it like it's a hobby, and that's just bothersome to me. Well, he's, you have to understand, he's very busy touring. I mean, he's got, he's right. like, <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's, right. like the yeah. second, it's like the second biggest tour of the summer. It's like yeah. you two Monsters. is doing the Joshua Tree, and then you've got J.D. Right. in the straight shots. Of course you do. You know, playing bars yes. all across the northeastern United States. All right, next. Right. Do you have more beef with Dennis Eckersley calling out Red Sox players or the players taking issue with it? I heard you guys discuss this this morning. I heard Buster this morning as well. Uh, so on the front end, let me just say, Mike, I agree with you. Mike Golick, I agree with you that uh, David Price could have done this differently, could have done it in private. But if I can, just for a second, guys, uh, let me just play the other side here. And Greedy, I think you would agree with this. Players are more affected. They care more about the criticism when it comes from a former player than they do if it comes from me or you. And, Greedy, I'll translate this over to golf for you. I read stories recently about how many players hate what Johnny Miller has to say when he is on the broadcast of a major tournament or any tournament because he's constantly talking about players choking and players kind of getting tight in the big moments. And I think that affects players more, a lot more because it's coming from one of their peers than it would if, if say, Jim Nance or Dan Hicks or a guy like that said it or Mike Greenberg or me or Scott Van Pelt said it. I think that's really bothersome. So you might say, listen, this is Eckersley, Eckersley's job, and it is his job. Uh, but I think David Price, in that moment, you have to understand, guys, it was Eduardo Rodriguez, a pitcher. They put his stats up on the screen, and Eckersley said, ugh, and then that day on the plane, that's when David Price confronted him. How about the reaction of the teammates? They all applauded David Price. That has to tell you something. I'm just wondering. I, like, I'm interested in your opinion. Does that tell you something, the fact that when Price did it, even though he probably should have done this thing in private, he got applause from all the other guys on that plane. Maybe, just maybe, Eckersley is being too hard on these guys. Is that possible? Oh, I mean, it's certainly possible. And, and by everybody else applauding just means that everybody else was thinking it as well. I still think it was handled poorly. Right. And I completely agree with you that players uh, take it harder criticism from former players. I, I completely agree with that. I just, think, I just think it's unbelievably petty to do it in that, in, in, in that way and not – confront a guy face to face I, I i just don't buy it but and overly critical i mean here's the thing i haven't heard all the things he said is he right in some of the things he things he said is he wrong listen it, it, when, when i criticize players or do an x's and o and say somebody did something wrong if somebody calls me out i'm i'm wrong then i need to, to make up for that if i was wrong x's and o wise but if i'm right and they're mad at me for it I, i'm in a position now we're tough i mean that's my job to do so if he's critical but he's right Listen, then the players deal with it. How you, you know, how you, you need to deal with so. it. But this to me looks like a petty way to stand up publicly. Not there's two separate elements yeah, it, to this, Gotti. It, it is, there's the element of the manner in which the response is handled. And then there's just an element of sensitivity to criticism. The reality is, you know, and, and it, it's not a perfect analogy, but it's an analogy. <laughs> If you want to be a big movie star today, right? If you want to be, you know, the star of, of, of the, you know, the the big action hero, you know, movies, whatever it is, Chris Hemsworth or whoever these guys are, you recognize that with all the th good things that come with that, right? With 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 all of the money and all of the fame and fans screaming your name and you know, private planes and private islands and whatever yeah, else it yeah. is, that what comes with that in this day and age, right or wrong, it is the the, the price of admission is paparazzi following you everywhere you go and people going through your garbage looking for things and, and all of that. That's just, that's just what goes with it. If you want to be a right. big baseball player today, if you want to be a star ball player today, and David Price has the biggest contract of any player in major, of any pitcher in Major League Baseball, doesn't make it fun, but this is part of what goes with it. Part of what goes with it is hearing legitimate criticism. If the criticism goes over a line, if it becomes personal or anything like that, that's one thing. But there's been no suggestion there's been any of that. Legitimate criticism goes with the territory, Stugatz. And if players are too sensitive to deal with that, then maybe they can't handle what, what it takes right now, particularly in a city like that, to play in the bigs. Uh, Greedy, it's a great point because give me David Price's money and Dennis Eckersley can say whatever he wants about me. I mean, listen, I'm making the money I'm making right now, and I let Lebertard say whatever he wants about me. So, uh, <laughs> right. So, like, like, Greedy, it's, it's a fantastic point. 
Uh, I, I just feel like David Price probably trying to be a leader in that spot, right? He is the highest paid pitcher on that team. He's the highest paid pitcher in baseball. He's one of the leaders in that clubhouse, and he's defending a guy who maybe didn't want to defend himself in Eduardo Rodriguez. So, uh, but your, your larger point is right. Mike, I agree with both of you. Mike, it should have been handled privately, and Greeny, that's a great point. If you're going to make the money that David Price is making, you got to deal with a bit of criticism. But keep in mind, the criticism wasn't about David Price. He was really defending a teammate there. So a lot of guys in that locker room probably are applauding David Price for being a leader and standing up to Dennis Eckersley. It's an excellent job by Stu Gotts of arguing both sides of the point vociferously. That, and in that's the my end, specialty, guys. In, in the end he leaves himself debating himself well he, he yes. really missed the boat because he made a lot more money being a lawyer and doing this yes well listen i'm working on a concept for, for a tv show here on espn where i literally I'm, and i'm not joking here where i argue with myself i just argue both sides of an argument that's it i thought that was called the dan levitard show with two gods <laughs> <laughs> yes but no levitard i'm getting levitard out of the way i'll split screen it it will be one personality versus my other personality and we're just going to go at it. Wow. Well done. Okay. Stu Gatz, today and every day with Dan Lebetard and company, starting 10 Eastern Coast to Coast here on ESPN Radio. Thank you, Stu. Thanks, Stu. All right, guys. Go and get some sleep, man. Oh, I'm going to. It's the first time I've seen him in, in, in a couple of weeks. The hair grows back fast. Fast on him, like right? a chia pet. Correct. Like he it's just ridiculous. shaved his head. It felt like two he minutes could, ago. He could lose a bet, have to shave all his body hair, and the next week he'd be back to normal. That is be weird. unbelievable. He's a hairy fellow. Yeah. Those of you watching on ESPN2 are seeing it right now. That is one hairy man. Hairy fellow. All right. Jimbo Fisher will join us in our studio next. Does he have one of the best teams in college football coming back? You know, he opens with Alabama. Yes, he does. A little team called Alabama. He's on his way in coming up in just a moment after this word from Zipa. Golik, you know some people never change. No matter if you tell them something's good for them, they just resist. You know what we're talking about. We're talking about the people who sleep with a snorer despite us telling them they need to get a Zipa. Yeah, we're, we're, they, they see hundreds of five-star reviews on Zipa.com. Hear the news story showing Zipa is the only one working. Listen to the life-saving testimonials and the money-back guarantee. But not enough people are understanding just what Zipa can do for you. Gang? going to help you or a loved one stop snoring go to zipa.com that's z-y-p-p-a-h.com and get a zipa so you can stop snoring and enjoy the summer a quick tip here for you zipa is happy z spelled backwards go to zipa.com z-y-p-p-a-h.com get a zipa today so you or a loved one can stop snoring and make sure you tell them mike and mike sent you we're back after this on mike and mike that's right in. Look that's at that. A goal. You do not waste beer on anything. I think that's extremely well done. I'm not going to lie to you. I hadn't seen that one. You thought she was going to dump the beer out? No. that's. You know what? We need to. I, I'm assuming that, that the young man she's sitting next to yeah. there is her significant other in some way. We'll assume. If not, yeah. we've got to fix her up with Mikey. I'm telling you. She's a, that's a goalie. That's a keeper right I mean, there. That's, I, could, I could see that woman doing that, walking yeah. down the aisle in the Basilica Certainly, at Notre if, Dame. If you see someone dumping the beer, you say, move on. <laughs> All right, he's the coach of one of the best teams in the country. He's in our studio after this Sports Center now. Two one to Stanton. He's hit high and deep to right. Back goes Chu at the wall. Goodbye. Giancarlo with another multiple home run game. And for the Marlins, a 4 nothing lead in the eighth. What a home run tear he's been on. Stanton now 11 homers in his last 15 games. The play-by-play courtesy 940 WINZ. Giancarlo Stanton has been red hot since the All-Star break. Uh, the two homers last night now tied with Aaron Judge for the most in the bigs with 32. Derek Rose has a one-year deal with Cleveland. 28-year-old former MVP joins LeBron and company. Does that hasten the departure of Kyrie Irving, or at least make it easier for them to trade him? We'll wait and see. And finally, the Broncos and John Elway have agreed on a five-year contract. Adam Schefter reports it'll make him the league's highest paid general manager. Sports Center with Mike and Mike, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Other wireless providers say they're going to cut your bill in half, but who knows what kind of coverage you're going to get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get nationwide coverage on America's largest, most dependable 4G LTE networks, and their no-contract unlimited plan is just $45 a month. All right, we are Mike and Mike, and it's our thrill here as a lot of the big college football coaches have come through ESPN in the last week or so. This team has won at least 10 games in six of his seven seasons at Florida State and figures to be right there again. This year, Jimbo Fisher is in our studio. Good, great to see you, Coach. How have you been? Great to see you, Mike and Mike. I, I guess first I would ask, we, we showed the video, and those that, that didn't see it, the, the hot thing now is these guys just going to different <laughs> people's driveways and slam dunking on, on their hoops. 
I, I don't want to assume and say you can't dunk. I can't dunk anymore. But if <laughs> if you could like that, would you go do that? I Heck think it's yes, I would. I, would world, it? I think it's something really neat. My son was telling me about it the other day, and I, I'd never heard of it. And I said, "What are you doing?" He said, "I'm filming this guy dunking." There was a guy in our in our own. He was filming. Him. He was going around dunking. I said, "Well, you're not doing the dunking." He said, "No." It's a shame that you can't dunk. It's, it's so much fun for guys like us who can. I mean, I go around and I just throw them down. Yeah, you, except you have to keep going to look for the Nerf hoop. Off the backboard and all that kind of stuff. Jimbo is here. Okay, so I'm fascinated by this dynamic. So we have the new college football playoff system in place. Yep. And I know a lot of this scheduling predates that. But you're opening with Alabama, which is a monster game. And it's fabulous for us, the fans. And it's particularly interesting because you used to work on Nick Saban's staff. But even putting that aside for the moment. Take us through the thinking of that kind of scheduling now, because someone like me might look at it and say, listen, you're going to play in a, in, a, in a really rough conference in the ACC. You yourself have said it may be the best football, football conference in America right now. You know, stockpile wins wherever you can find them. You'll win enough games in the conference. Take us through the thinking on a monster early season schedule game like that. Well, you know, it, it, I think one of the things that you get out of that game, you're talking about the football playoff, the, the, the big bowl games. Well, the only way you can create that environment – for those guys, is a neutral site game. And it gets them in the environment of going, I'm not at home, I'm not, on their, I'm not in their turf, or we're at a neutral site, the fans are 50-50, it's a different city, the atmosphere, the chaos, as they say, you know, the clutter, all the things that you have to eliminate. When you go play those playoff games, those major bowl games, which we've been in over the last five years, you have to create that environment. So creating that environment again, and then in the beginning, when this was game, was, they were trying to get Nick and I, we started having success, and we're the two winningest teams in the country over the last seven years. And they've been after us, so we finally worked it out. But at that time, we were bringing Florida State back on the map. We were trying to bring them up. And when we scheduled that game, I think it was back in 12, if I'm not mistaken, when we scheduled it, somewhere around then, 12 or 13. But both teams getting up, all right, you know, it's a great brand, it's a branding game to me. You get two great programs, you get to go out there and you go head-to-head recruiting. You know, Atlanta's a big area for us to all recruit. You know, that whole dynamic dynamic and creating that atmosphere I think is very important for these kids to get used to being that in that and, and and while you want every year to start the same you love the enthusiasm the start of a new year the whole thing it's it's just or I should say how different do you think this will be I know the coaches aren't part of the summer workouts but yeah. certainly you can get reports from the from the strength coach on just how how it can be and then you're getting ready to start camp do you expect it to be emotionally different because Let's be honest. Some teams start out with smaller schools, too. They use those as kind of, yep. you know, easing their way into the season. Obviously, this isn't that. So do you expect a big difference in the mental side and the emotion of the players? It definitely gets your attention in the offseason. You know you can't come in and play and, well, I'm going to play myself. You know, you hear guys, I'm going to play myself into shape. I'm going to do this, and like in pro camp and things like that. No, you're going to have to be your best right off the bat. And we played Ole Miss a year ago, who at that time was preseason 11. Right. We played Oklahoma State a couple years ago in Jerry's World out there, which was a big atmosphere and environment. So we're used to that. But now Alabama, of course, has been as good as anybody in America over the last – since Nick's been there, last 10 years. I mean, he, he's, that's the premier team right now. And, but it definitely gets your attention. And I, but the thing you said there, which I hope our guys don't, is the emotional. I think we do focus-wise. But I think emotionally, you can only get yourself peaked so often – you know what I'm saying? And at certain times, maybe we get into that game. But I think the focus and concentration of knowing that we have to do things right from the beginning and the, and the urgency to do it, I think, really intensifies that way. Mike and Mike Jimbo Fisher is with us here giving us the Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. He's one of only four active coaches who've won the national championship in college football with Urban Meyer, Dabo Sweeney, and, of course, Nick Saban, who, again, you worked mm-hmm. for, and now you go head-to-head against. How is it different for you coaching against him? I mean, we used to go at it and practice every day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the offensive side of the ball, but it, it, there was, but it was great respect. And 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 uh, I, I think you know you still you you win a, when you're a competitor, you want to measure yourself against guys who are, are highly competitive and highly successful. And of course, Nick has been as successful as anybody in college football. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And I think the programs and the significance of the game for where we're trying to go. We're both trying to go to a national playoff and a national championship, you know, season as, as we lead in. So I mean, I think it's going to be very interesting. Nick's one again tremendous coach tremendous you know there's so many things about him that we all say but he's a great organizer a great uh as i say he can he can intensify guys he knows how to push the buttons of guys he, he knows how to coach on offensive the everybody says you know he's an off defensive guy well he understands offense trust me <laughs> and yeah. what he has to have to to do it but it was great learning under but now you know we've we've 
um, went our own directions. It's going to be a highly competitive football game. How, and so how about your team coming in this year? If In a position like you, you'll get great players all the time. you get guys that move on in the mm-hmm. NFL, but because of the recruiting, you get depth, and, and the ne- next cycle comes on through. So where are you now? I think right now we've hit a really good cycle. I think, you know, last year we had, a, we had some a few seniors that were really dynamic, and, of course, Dalvin, who yeah. went out early, and, and Travis and, uh, and uh, Big Rod Johnson. But other than that, you know, we, we've hit one of our most experienced teams. I mean, up front we'll have four of the five starters back, uh, Two of the two of the three wideouts right now had great years. The second half of the year with Nooney Murray and Auden Tate, when bringing in some other young guys coming in, uh, some young backs that are talented. Jock Wes has played well, and he got an experienced quarterback. Anytime you have an experienced quarterback, I think it's big. And defensively, we return almost everybody, and we get a guy named Derwin James back, who um, I'll be real happy to watch play. So talk about the quarterback uh, with, with the greatest name, DeAndre Francois. I mean, <laughs> it's one of the great names. Forget it, just quarterback uh, that, that we get to say out there. What in his development, what, where does, what's the next step for him? You know, everybody talks about his personal development, which he does. He's a, he's a film junkie. He understands and he studies the protections. He studies coverages, how to get the ball out, where my guys and my one-on-ones are going to be and all that. But where I really saw his growth is in his relationship to players. And I think once he's established his feet on the ground, okay, I can play. I'm a tough guy. They respect me. They'll follow me. But what he has done is learn to – control his his teammates and help them in other words the guy he has to get on in practice the guy he has to walk in the private and pat on the tail the guy he has to talk to away from from there you know what i mean and learning how to get guys like i tell me no matter how much talent you have as a quarterback well those guys lay down and play for you and i think they've respected him that way but now they see him in a different like we got to take this we're going from 10 wins to 13 wins or 14 wins or 15 wins and you know really getting guys to understand his mentality as a competitor and people don't talk about that as much as a quarterback we all talk about what they can do physically and all that but i mean that that was the relationships and the trust he has and the ability in the off season. Hey, we got, let's go take a half hour right here and work on these two routes. Let's do the, you see so much of that right now, and I think that's where his real growth is coming in. Mike and Mike Jimbo Fisher is here, head coach, Florida State. Again, they open with what should be a fantastic game against Alabama at the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. I'm always fascinated by the dynamic of the way, you know, the world is changing and football is such a, um, it's such a regimented place. It, it is the one, maybe the one place left in sports anyway, where it feels like the coach says something and the players just do it. And, and, and they're in almost every other place. I feel like there's a lot of questioning of that. Mm-hmm. Have you found that changing? I, the young people are so different than they were 10, 15, certainly Mike, when you were growing yeah. up as a football player, how different is it now? It, it is definitely different. And, and when I, th- I think social media has been a big part of that because because I think, and there's so many different people in their ears, so many different things, and I, and I think just the influx of the game, how the TV, the, the coverage, all the, and from high school. I mean, we're, we're on these guys from 8th, ninth, 10th grade, and then they're going to camps and openings, and everybody knows them, and they're told they're going to be this and that, and they're, now they're a commodity. They're, not going to, you know, they're going to get a great education, but also i got a chance to play ball. You know what I'm saying? And In three years, I can be in the league. How you develop me? I think it's very important to have open lines of communication. I think if you, op- if you openly talk to those folks, and the players, and their families, and the people involved, their coaches, and explain to what's going on, what's going to happen. Don't don't keep them in the dark and just say, like my dad used to say, why? Because I said so. Uh, listen. <laughs> now, there's times you I want would, to do No, that. I'm with you. I, I, I'm agree, but you'd like that every now and then to just do it because I said so. You know, they don't listen. But, they, they but, don't, but no, they don't want to hear that, right? They don't want to hear it. They do if they trust you. There's time to say, listen, I ain't got time. Just please do it. I'll yeah. explain it later. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If there's a trust factor, and I think the open lines of communication and being honest with them and tell them, and then afterwards, why? Now, like days, some days I'll get on a kid, and we'll ride him hard in practice, and then he'll be head his head, and I'll put my arm around him as I'm walking off, and this is why I did this. I think if you explain to kids now why, and they understand that you have their best interest at heart, when you do have those moments you say, because I said so, yes, sir. And that comes from the word trust. I think they also learn to question during practice because they get an extra 20-second break. <laughs> if they, if they ask, keep asking why. You know, players, obviously in college, they rotate through every three, four, five years. So, and I, I remember when, when I was at Notre Dame, there wasn't the summer school. But you still, you yeah. get that antsiness when camp is getting ready to go. Like in the NFL, it was like a couple weeks before camp, my wife wanted me yeah. out of the house and such. But you've been constant through all this, through all the changes, been doing this a long time. How is it for you? When, when do you kind of get that? I'm going to camp feeling, and it really starts to churn. As soon as you get back off vacation, those, those, after those first week or so of July, I mean, you get that little break with your family, and you got to go have it, and, you know, you finish up your camps, and you're dying to get on the vacation. <laughs> and then you get there, and then, then you're about halfway into it, and all of a sudden your mind just starts clicking. I mean, it does. You hate to take it away. And as soon as you get back, you know because, you know, how quickly that thing gets up on you, and you got to be prepared and have a plan. And I think the organization part of it is really critical. So when you get back, you know exactly where you're going to go and letting your players know what they got to do. And you're coaching in a big-time conference, obviously, in the ACC. 
see. I got Urban Meyer yesterday saying the Big Ten is the best college football <laughs> conference. I got people in the SEC, probably led by Paul Feinbaum, screaming and yelling, no, we're still the best <laughs> conference. What, what is with this competitiveness over, the, uh, over which is the best conference? Well, I do. Here, here's what I do think. I, I, I think it's all starting to really level out. I think the players are going everywhere, the things. And you look at the history. And why I said about the ACC, because we had said, you know, for years it was the SEC, it was the Big Ten, and ACC was thought that was a basketball league, which it is. I think it was the finest basketball mm-hmm. league. But why can't we be the finest football league? And I think you look in the last five years from two Heisman Trophy winners, two national champions, three uh, teams have been in it. Uh, and the only t- we've had three and three of the last four we've been in it. The number of coaches, the influx of coaches in the ACC. Destination jobs are now becoming the players. I think in the, in the results we've had in playoff games and major bowl games, I think we're 8-3 and three in the last five years in playoff games, national championship games, and major six games, and, I, and then head-to-head meetings. We've done that. So, I mean, I think, listen, they're all great conferences, but I think we're just as good, and I think our division, in my opinion, is, is as good as there is in college football. And obviously the lifeblood of college football is the recruits and the players coming through. How, from when you first started oh. going into a kid's living room and trying to sell your pro program how, how much has that changed what's the biggest changes you've seen in doing what now? you just said going in <clears throat> see i get to go in in december and january when you're a senior most of those decisions are already made right Back in the day, you never even knew. That's right. I mean, going in now. Now it's when they're coming early, when they're coming to your camp, when they're coming on the unofficial visit, when do they come on the official visit? Very. I mean, you can count on one hand or less the amount of times you're actually going into a guy's living room in December and January, and that decision is being made. It's being made year round now because of social media and travel and our world becoming such a global world that people can go all the different places. That's what you just said is the biggest change in the world. Will you, how early would you offer a guy? I mean, how- very few. I mean, there's a few guys, for instance, we offered Derwin as a freshman, uh-huh. but he was physically mature and ready. Right. And there's very few guys that you'll do, but there's two or three or five, two, maybe five guys a year you'll offer in that class that you just, you see the size, you see the potential, you know their mindset, you've been, and you've been around them enough. That's the big thing, being right. around them. But, you know, it's usually in that freshman year or so. Jimbo, it's great to have you here. Does this guy look familiar to you at all? You have, you're making it. <laughs> uh, Ryan Clark is here. Oh, hey, he remembers those battles every day we used to have in practice now. Huh? Uh-huh. How you doing, buddy? Look at that. Hey, this guy was a heck of a player now. We used to about hey. Yeah, he keeps telling us that. Bringing guys together. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan talks. Go ahead. He was Jump on that mic. We yeah. Go ahead. Give him a microphone. Go ahead. You know, Jimbo, Jimbo came around and started some new stuff at, uh, <laughs> at LSU. We stunk it up before, uh, before Nick and, and Jimbo got there. So, obviously, you know, uh, these guys owe a lot to them. Because had we continued stinking, I probably uh, would be working somewhere else. I'd probably be at Tiger Athletic Foundation <laughs> or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 something. Right here. <laughs> Jimbo, thanks a million. Great, thanks, to, great, see great, great, great to see you. Great to be with you. Great to see you as well. Quick Thank break you. on Mike and Mike. Back in a moment after this word from Taylor Made. You know, I've been telling you all summer long, I have made a new change in golf balls. You know that I'm very particular about